Do you live in the US and want fast, fresh and tasty meals without the hassle of shopping or all that hard work preparation? Well, don't you worry. As a lazy man, I've got you covered. Try America's number one meal kit service, HelloFresh, and get yourself fresh, pre-portioned ingredients delivered direct to your door. So why not eat well, stay healthy, and avoid the cost of regular takeout by trying HelloFresh? Just click the link in the description below for a special limited time discount and free shipping as well. Enjoy. Well, I think we might have got a little too excited because there is no doubt that we are back in relegation trouble as the busy festive period comes around in the Premier League. We're two places clear of the relegation zone and we've got some crucial games coming up in this episode. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 71 of The Head Coach with me, Daniel. We are back today to face Chelsea and Leeds as the festive fixtures start. And these are two games that are bigger than we thought, with us just four points clear of the relegation zone. We play Leeds in 19th place, six points behind us. It looks like it's Burnley and two others for relegation this year. And Chelsea are the struggling ones of the big boys down in 10th, albeit United are below them at the minute. So that is going to be a game where maybe we've got more of a chance than we initially thought. Given some of the fixtures coming up as well, we're going to have to take calculated gambles with selection. We did manage to beat West Ham earlier in the year. It was our first win, but that's in between Leeds and Burnley at home. And if we want to stay up, we've got to beat the bottom two at home. So we might have to make some big decisions there. If you're looking forward to it and seeing how we get on, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. We'll also have a little look at our youth intake preview and of course, ahead to the January transfer window. We've got a few players that are trying to force their way out. But let's start by seeing the recent results because unlike the last episode where we'd only lost one game in our run of fixtures, well this time we've only won one. And that's a concern because we've played Watford and Norwich at home. So you were with me for Forest and City, the start of a run of four successive defeats. We lost 2-1 at home to Aston Villa. Guy Vaknin got the goal, but it wasn't enough. 1-0 away to Brighton, a late first half goal. A 1-0 win at home to Watford in a game we were firmly outplayed. We were very fortunate to get the three points. And I don't think in any of the games since the last episode, and including those two in fact, I don't think we've been the better side in any of them. Jan Kuto did give us three crucial points. A defeat 1-0 away at United, Trincao scored the goal as we held on for dear life. A 2 all draw at home to Norwich, this was the one that cost us. They are currently in 18th on 14 points and that is the problem because if we had managed to get the three there, didn't let in that 93rd minute equaliser, that gap would not be four points. That gap, well it would be what, an extra two points for us, one point for them. That gap would be seven points, it would be a lot different. And the other goal scorer for Norwich, just to make it a little bit more frustrating, was Troy Parrott, the man that the director of football, Dougie Friedman, tried to sign at the start of deadline day. We then lost 2-1 away at Brentford, albeit Guy Vakning did get back to scoring ways. And now we go away to Chelsea and face Leeds at home. The latter of the two is crucial to our chances of survival. Let's have a little look at the future though with Crystal Palace because we have got a youth intake preview and it looks very good. Looks like strikers are going to be stars of it and fullbacks as well. So maybe a slight change of tactic for the future years if we can do the job and stay up this time around. I also want to look at the players out on loan because some of these youngsters have become real superstars. Chris Lewis looks like he's going to be a partner for Vaknin next year. We've got two real top quality players. And with Tony aging, with Alphys getting older and plenty of others as well, it really does give us a chance to go to the next level. Sam Fawns is pushing on as well. And again, you're looking at Pasalic at 35. Gibbs White is into his 30s. Tom Davis, 32. So getting stronger in those areas for later down the line. But it's not going to be particularly helpful if we're sacked having made Palace a championship club. We promised to keep them up when we had that meeting, when we had our job interview. So let's go and see if we can get closer to doing it. We go through the transfer screen. There's nothing actively going on at the minute, as you'd probably expect. But there are a few players that have forced their way onto the transfer or loan list. There's two or three that have said they're going to retire as well. Pasalic, Holden and Odysseus are those. But then you've got the likes of Mitran Mert, uh, John Buckley, who will want to go out on loan, and a few others who are wildly unhappy at the club. 
Add to that that we've had a little spell of injuries. You can see a few players returning to fitness. You can see one or two that are still injured as well. We're being tested at the moment. It's a tricky spell. And if there's one thing this side can't afford, we discussed it at the start of the season, is to have three or four players out at a time. And that is largely what we've been dealing with since the last episode. So let's go and get away to Chelsea. Five days off after, so hopefully we can rest a few then. But let's just go out with our strongest possible team. The morale shot. The form is not good at the minute. And of course, we are a little depleted. Gibbs White is building up his fitness. Still missing Kelleher and Williams, who would be starting in that defence. But the rest of the team is going to stay the same, I think. Buckley played well last time out, so I'm not going to bring Pasalic back in. And we've got no other option at left wing back, despite my reservations about Ren and Lodi. So it does mean that Nikolau, the penalty conceder, as he's nicknamed here, is going to have to start this game. We've got Rajkovic in goal. Nikolau is alongside Polido and Richards at the back. Kuto and Lodi, the wing backs, with Buckley and Davis in central midfield. Morgan Gibbs White, the number 10. Vaknin and Tony up front. I've been tempted to go for Ribeiro, but in truth, none of them have played well when they've been on the pitch. For us, it's about creating chances. It's about getting ourselves out of trouble. If we can get ahead in a game, we might have a chance. But at the moment, we're letting in early goals. We're then struggling late on in matches with an older squad. And our confidence is shot to bits. It's not a good combination. Let's go to Stamford Bridge and see if we can produce a miracle. Well, four changes for Chelsea. Still quite a few originals and familiar names in this team. So you've got Rhys James, Chilwell and Fafana in the back four. We can see Bernardo Silva weirdly with Anana from Everton in midfield and Mount and Havertz in the attacking line. On the bench, you've got Julian Alvarez, who featured in one of our top threes recently. Ubicar Kamara from Aston Villa. Lots of familiarity there from the Premier League. So they've got a squad that, based on that, is probably all near enough in its peak. Let's go and get into the first half. We're going to try and push them a little bit because, in general terms, they've not had a good season. Let's see if they find their confidence and form against us or if we can keep that run going. Big away following there behind the goal. Let's give them something to shout about. Well, a very quiet first 20 minutes, but Chelsea are the side that have had the only shots of the game, and I'm sure they'll be on the front foot now with Bernardo Silva. Big switch of play. Lodi's up. He does win that one in fairness. Nickel out to Buckley, and he gets it wide to the wing back. Header away is as far as Guy Fackning, but again, the service is a little bit short. It's not really of the highest quality. It is long, hopeful balls that we're not getting on the end of. Flying tackle there, and that, that sums up the season. Poor service to the front man, a wild flying tackle in midfield, and an absolute pearl up from a Premier League star on the other team. We just haven't got that quality. Bar one moment of magic in Vaknin, we haven't got that. We had it in Neto, who's now left the club, and that lack of midfield creativity is showing. Let's have a look at this guy, because I don't recognise the name. 25-year-old, he is in the Ajax youth team in real life. And he is now world class. I mean, he is a superstar. Not maybe got the greatest long shot ability or finishing. But he certainly seems to have found that today. Five minutes to the break. We've had no shots at all. Not even just on target. And now Buckley's caught Dalian on the ball. Through ball's headed away by Richards to Kuto. He can bring it downfield, but instead plays the short, simple pass. Polito finds Richards. And again, now, now we're caught in possession. It's twice for Buckley. Mount puts it in. I mean, it's the same old mistakes, isn't it? We are playing, and you look at this with injuries again, we are playing championship players at Premier League level. Lodi is not of this ability. He came from Chelsea in the summer because they didn't want him anymore. Buckley is not Premier League level. Him or Pasalic are playing because Neto was sold. We've just not got the ability elsewhere. There's so little confidence in the club, and we've got a big job to pick them up before Leeds because that game is crucial for us, and we have got to find a way to get it right. We're going to drop to cautious, just try and limit the damage. And at the hour mark, we'll probably rest people for Boxing Day because, let's be honest, that is a chance at winning a game. There's lots of frustration. There's lots of anger here. So let's see what we can do. We've got Kuto off. We'll bring on young Luigi Castro for him. Up front, I'm going to take off Guy Vaknin for a rest. Ribeiro on there. I'm looking into midfield as well. Buckley maybe for Pasalic. Morgan Gibbs-White is not in great form and he's not back to fitness yet. So I'm going to give Murt a run out. I don't think he's made a league appearance yet. He has not. So he'll get his first one today. And then at the back, Mustafa can come on for Richards. Does struggle with keeping his fitness a little bit. So that one just makes it five changes and a few of the big suspects to miss out on Boxing Day will now be able to stay fit. So if we stay cautious, if we keep encouraging the lads, who knows? Maybe we can keep the score down. 
Can we at least have one shot today? As Tony flies into a challenge, lucky not to be penalised. He's back to Polito and Mustafa. Into midfield to Tom Davis and now Mert. He goes back to Mustafa. Can one of the fearless youngsters deliver? Big ball over the top towards Castro. Out of position but flicks on. Ribeiro to Mert. Oh, look how it's worked out. Atak Mert in for his Premier League debut for us. And he scored his first ever goal for the club too. And he's someone who is nowhere near the ability, but he's not got that baggage. And maybe that is crucial. Mert might be pushing for a start on Boxing Day as Castro loses out there in a challenge. Kamara wins it back though. Out to the left to Julian Alvarez, the Argentinian. From City to Chelsea in game. What can he do with a cross? Big ball to Reese James. Beats his man. Havertz must have been offside. We'll see what happens here. VAR will check. He looked off to me. Please don't let it be 3-1. Not straight after we've scored. Please, please, please. Goal review is in place. Goal is disallowed. It stays 2-1. Imagine we can nick a point here. It would be a phenomenal steal. With five minutes left, we've still got an opportunity. Let's encourage once more. Try and get them on the front foot. But we've not deserved anything from this game. Chelsea may be unfortunate to only score two. And we've scored our only shot. Not enough to win. But one positive is Atak Mert. Back on Boxing Day to face Leeds. Let's hope it's better than that one. Here we go then. Boxing Day and we are back for a huge game at the bottom at home to Leeds. Ivan Tony has picked up a knock and unfortunately is not fully fit for this one. The same still applies for Kelleher Williams and Abdullahi Traore. But some of the others are a little bit closer. So we're going to see what we can put out today. Probably just going to be the change up front in truth, isn't it? So sold out Selhurst, it's Ivan Tony who can't start. So on comes Ribeiro for him. I am tempted to put Mur in after his sort of cameo in the weekend, but he is such a poor player in comparison. But we know that Gibbs White is not quite fully fit. We know that he's not been in full form, but that's not going to matter today. Let's stick with it. That's the team we're going to put out. I'm going to bring Pasalic back in for Buckley in the holding role. And that means this is the team I am trusting to get us three crucial points in the Premier League. I'm going to do a few of the individual chats, which we all know and love to build confidence. We'll be back in a minute for kickoff at Selhurst. Here we go then. It is games like this that will decide our Premier League fate. Renato Tapia is into the Leeds United side. I managed him somewhere this year or last. I can't remember where. Hamza Chowdhury, Archie Gray and Tyler Adams in that midfield. Moisey Keane up front as well. We know how good Leeds are. We played them in the championship when we were at Ipswich. While face on the bench, they've got quality everywhere. But this is an opportunity. We are playing against a promoted club. We have got to make it count. We have got to get on the front foot. And we've got to find a way to win. Can we go and do it? Let's get through the tunnel interview and find out. Well, you'll be able to see a slight change of tactic as we come back for a Leeds corner. And that is to the right of the screen there. We've left one man up. But what do you do when that happens? Archie Gray has just put one in the top corner from 35 yards. What on earth are we supposed to do? How do you compete with that when every shot that someone takes goes in? I mean, you've got to see this again. It's a ridiculous goal. How on earth do I stop things like this? He's picked it up on the half volley. I mean, there's no danger in that situation. It's a ridiculous goal. It's a stunning strike. And now we're on the back foot again. It's these little things that are dent in the confidence. We're going to encourage the lads. We're on the front foot and we will go positive in a minute. But Leeds are a good side. As Vaknin is fouled there, the ref ignores it. Of course he does as it's back to Polito. Let's create this siege mentality. Great ball, Pasalic. Vaknin's in. Oh, I saw the referee's hand go up. What does that mean? We're going to VAR. It looked close. I won't lie to you. I'm not entirely confident here. Please count. Give us a bit of luck. Goal awarded. Get in, Guy Vaknin. The man is there. Pasalic with a great ball back in the team. But now we're on the back foot again. It's straight into the box. Jesus Christ. Every single time they attack. What is going on back there? I cannot believe we've been done straight away. I'm going positive because we're getting outplayed. This is infuriating. I'm starting to find this club a real chore to manage because... There's no consistency in the players. We had two months where we were great at the back, not good going forward. Back then's come in and now we're good going forward at times, but we can't defend to save our lives. We've changed nothing defensively. And here come Leeds again on the left-hand side. I genuinely think, and you can 
timestamp this one for when it happens later in the season. I genuinely think we'll get relegated with this club. I don't think I've got the juice to keep them up. And that's not a good thing to be saying when you're outside the relegation zone in December. We're 2-1 down. We look completely void of ideas already. I'm going to demand more. I've got a few players reacting, but again, it's all good reacting and smiling and saying you're going to do better. You've got to actually produce the goods at some point. Leeds have had loads of shots without much of an expected goal threat. But again, bar our goal, we've had nothing on target. We've shown nothing at all. And it's another Leeds corner here from the right-hand side. Headed away to Gray. Would be our luck if he put in a hat-trick of them. Davis clears to Vaknin. Poor touch. What's going on here? Even Guy Vaknin slipping up now. Through to Moisey Keane, right side of the box. He cuts inside. Back to Adams on the edge. He scored a screamer as well. I mean, what do you do? It's not our day. First goal of the season. Tyler Adams scores a rocket. And that is two absolute screamers and a free header. It's not going to be our day, this. 3-1 leads. We're back in trouble. Two points clear of relegation. We'll go back to balance because clearly being aggressive isn't working. We're going to pump the fist. No, we're not. We're going to throw the water bottle. It was pathetic. I don't care if you're losing confidence. You've got to start growing up and showing a bit of responsibility. The tactic is sound. We've seen it in many a game. Defensively, we've been good. But how can you keep letting in rockets like that? As Chambers gets the ball to the right, Lodi into the team, nowhere near good enough. Ratchkovic wasn't even covering his goal. Get in the middle of your goal and save the shot. Gromzas will take the corner. We've looked poor from these all day. First one headed away. Archie Gray is free again, despite me having two men on the edge of the box. Adams goes in and straight at Ratchkovic. I'm just very close to exploding at the moment. I'm not quite sure what we're going to do. Leeds are having corner after corner after corner after corner. And he's going to give a penalty now. I don't even know what that's for. Is it a handball? Is it a push? There was nothing in there whatsoever. Andrew Madley to VAR. Of course a penalty is awarded. Moisey Keane will step up. Are oh, we going to get sacked? We're going to get relegated and it's all going to go wrong. Keane up into the bottom corner. Oh, I want to do a lot of swearing right now. Let's go attacking. What can we do in terms of subs? What is there a point in doing? Mert will come on again. He deserves a chance because at least he's got some balls about him. Malake can come on right wing back. Nikolaou's been shocking again. I bet he gave away the penalty. You play him, you know what's coming. We're also going to bring on Luigi Castro for Tom Davis. And the final sub probably doesn't matter at this point. But Ribeiro off and Alnfist on. Five changes made with 4-1 down, a home to a promoted side in the relegation zone. And if anything tells you we're in big trouble, is the fact that Leeds and Norwich below us, we will have taken one point. And it's not the fact that we're not winning these games that's actually frustrating me. It's the fact we're getting completely outclassed in them. I might just have to change the tactic and go all out for it. We didn't have Vaknin when we created this tactic. Can we now go on a one up front? Can we put some natural width in a team? Play a four at the back because Nikolaou's not been what we expected. We've not got enough good midfielders, but maybe we can make it work. As Vaknin chases in behind, it's straight through to Kelleher. And of course, the injuries don't help either because Ren and Lodi's having a shocking time. Our wing backs generally are better at fullback. I think I'm going to do it. Let me know in the comments if you agree. I'm going to go to a four, either a 4 3 3 or a 4 2 3 1. And we'll see if it makes a difference as it's chipped over to Keane. Don't you dare. In for 5-1. I thought he was offside, but I don't even want to contemplate at this point. Moisey Keane fractionally offside. And that one is disallowed. We get away with one at last. 4-1, it remains. It is quite amusing that we went attacking 25 minutes ago and we've not yet had a shot on target. We've just not got the quality on the front foot. But we're going to have to pack out this midfield because we're getting done so often. The fact that they've managed to create so many chances out wide, we've got to protect our, well, pretty fragile fullbacks defensively as Pasalic gives the ball away again. How many times are we going to get caught dallying on the ball? It's becoming infuriating to watch. Leeds nearly score again. We're second to everything. We've got bottom side Burnley at home in two games time. We have got to set up differently to this because we can't afford to lose that game. I am going to go definitely for a back four. And we'll see what we can do with the rest of it. Look at the stats for this game. It's horrific. That is, again, the worst performance we've ever had in this save. Let me know if you agree with my plan tactical change in the comments. Because we are going to look very different when we set up next time. Might even be sacked. That would be very different, wouldn't it?
But definitely a back four is the way forward because we can't carry on like this. We have got to find a way to do better. I still can't explain. Take aside all of the problems with injuries and all of the other little bits there. I still can't explain how we've gone from being very solid at the back to like this without actually changing anything. But I am going to have to change it. We're going to go 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1. We're going to make sure we get out of trouble. It's not going to be pretty to watch, but this is what I keep saying to you guys. We tried to play nice short of football this year. Look at where it's led us to. 17th place. Our easiest home game is coming up next. We've already played the other two sides below us at home. We've lost and drawn, and we've not looked very good in this one. So let's go and have a look at the schedule for when we're going to be back. And my word, it's going to have to get better than that. Well, five in a row now without winning, and two of those were against sides at home in the bottom three. We've also had that Watford game that we nicked 1-0 but didn't deserve to win, and that is our only win since Bournemouth, which was before the last episode, let alone this one. What we're going to do, though, is come back for transfer deadline day because it's a huge week. We face Norwich and Watford three days apart. Watford are two points above us. Norwich are three points below us with a game in hand. So we'll show whichever one of those is most important. We'll also show deadline date with Dougie Friedman. Maybe he'll get us a replacement for Neto. So our whole midfield isn't in its mid-30s. But if you want to find out if he does, whether our tactical change works, let me know what you think it should be down in the comments. And please do put a thumbs up on the video. I'll say the same as I said at the end of the last episode. I know some of you enjoy seeing failure, and you've certainly seen it again today. The worst you could have possibly imagined if you want to stay up to date and see if we improve, then subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Get your predictions in. Will we get relegated? I'll try and cheer myself up, but it's going to rely on Dougie Friedman and a new tactic to work. In the meantime, if you want to stay up to date with something a bit more positive, we've got the start of a new season in our Build a Nation save tomorrow. That one is up in the eye above if you missed any of it. There's also a link to the Twitch channel, the football podcast, the blog series, and of course the sponsor HelloFresh 2. But a massive thank you for watching as always. Let's just forget this episode ever happened. I'll see you again on transfer deadline day. Fingers crossed with some improvement on the pitch.